Emerald ash borer was first discovered in Michigan in about uh, the latter part of June in 2002. Uh, we had been monitoring the ash decline in southeast Michigan for about three years and thought it was associated with uh, ash yellows or ash decline. Uh, then it was brought to our attention that there was a, a green metallic wood boring insect associated with the ash decline and as we went through the identification process, we found out that it was an exotic pest. When the emerald ash borer was actually discovered, I was in, in China at the time working on the Asian longhorn beetle. The firewood pile was right here. This is ground zero. And Deb McCullough sent me the email saying, Bob, it looks like we have a, a new pest on ash. We'll get home fast. <laughs> Robert Hack, a research entomologist with the Forest Service, soon discovered that the new beetle was indeed leaving a destructive path. And when I first saw the damage caused by emerald ash borer, I was very worried because it was like reminiscent, reminiscent of what people experienced during Dutch elm disease, that there were entire city blocks in the Detroit area that were completely planted to ash. Uh, these are some of the same streets that had lost all the elm trees just a few decades earlier and then they replanted either to maple or ash and in these same areas now every single tree had been infested by the emerald ash borer and in many cases every tree was had already died or was near death. To stop the spread of this infestation Michigan has had to act quickly. Because there isn't any known treatments yet we've had to rely on the removal of host material which is you know cutting down trees. After the pest was found, we had a number of our staff go and inspect the nurseries um, to see if there were any more infested trees uh, throughout the state. Uh, largely, we found those, those to be negative. We also established what we call an, as an internal quarantine, where we restricted the movement of regulated materials, and that has, uh, has helped to prevent the, the movement of the, the pest outside of the state of Michigan. We do have a lot of ash, especially in the Midwest and in the northeastern part of the United States. So if, if it proves to be as destructive as Dutch elm disease, you know, worst case scenario, we lose a lot of our ash trees. And that's a significant impact because it is a very common tree in urban areas as well as in forests. For Steve Kotovich, also an entomologist with the U.S. Forest Service, part of the problem is the difficulty that identifying this pest presents. This is a very difficult task to survey for emerald ash borer. The early infestations have no real significant signs on the outside of the tree. The way we're getting the traps up high is we use the, the fishing arrow and we shoot it out of the bow, we shoot it over a big limb pull that back through the branch and hoist the trap up into the canopy. What we've done to try to look at attraction and landing rates of the beetles is we take uh, plastic wrap, wrap it real tightly around an area of this tree, and then we smear a real sticky material called tanglefoot. But you can see right here there's an emerald ash borer adult beetle that, that's landed there in the last couple days. This part of the experiment lets us compare their attraction to green ash, white ash, and black ash. That's one of the things we need as a good survey tool. This is not like gypsy moth. You cannot see an egg mass. The eggs are very small. <clears throat> the beetle lands on the tree and she lays a very small egg in a very tiny little crack or crevice in the bark. So it's, it's you can see it with a microscope, but again, if you don't know it's there, you're not going to find it. The primary damage that's caused by the emerald ash borer is the feeding that happens by the larvae. And all the, the galleries that we can see here, or tunnels, are constructed by s several different larvae that we're feeding uh, on this particular tree. Right underneath the bark there's a layer called the phloem, and it feeds on that, uh, that layer, which is very important in transporting uh, food from the leaves down into the root system. So they tunnel in that area, damage it, and the tree basically uh, can't move food. And, and water uh, flow up from the roots to the top of the tree is also affected. You get enough of those in the tree and it kills it. There was probably hundreds of um, borers that exited this tree. When they complete their development in the late summer, then they tunnel into the bark, spend the winter there, and then the next summer they turn into a pupa and then, then into the adult. And then the adult chews its way out through the bark 
and they form a D-shaped exit hole and there's a few of those that we can see here on the bark surface. This should serve as a lesson uh, or an education tool opportunity for us. Diversify your landscape. Don't rely on one tree species. If you're outside of that current infestation, don't uh, overreact. Don't cut your ash tree down. Um, don't get over con overly concerned on that end. If you have an ash tree and it's has dead branches in the crown, leaves that are yellow instead of green uh, in the middle of the summer, <clears throat> um, trees that are dying in the area, those are trees you need to take or find someone to take a good look at. And then you want to look uh, simply for, for holes in the bark. You want to peel back the bark on a dead tree and see if there's tunneling underneath there. And yet, again, I think what people need to do then is make uh, city foresters aware of those dead trees um, extension folks uh, use the resources that are in the community that can look at the tree and tell you if that's something that's not normal killing that tree.